I'm in Windows Server 2025. Let's install Active Directory. I'm going to go to the Add Roles and Features, and I'll click Next when the wizard shows up. And I'll keep going and clicking Next until I get to Server Roles. In Server Roles, I'm going to want to check the box for Active Directory Domain Services. And then I'll check the box for Add Features. Click Next, 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 and Install. Now you want to make sure you have a static IP address on your computer before you get started because if you're using DHCP and then something changes, then your users won't, may not be able to find your domain controller and they couldn't actually log in. Just installing the domain services doesn't actually set up Active Directory. That's just the first step. After domain services are installed, I'll go ahead and start the installation of Active Directory. The installation has completed, so now I'm going to go to this little triangle at the top and choose to promote this server to be a domain controller. Now you're going to have lots of different options when you go to do this uh, promotion, so make sure you pay attention to this next part. So you have the option to add a domain controller to an existing domain, and that is the default option. But this is a brand new forest and domain. So when you choose to add a new forest, it creates both a forest and a domain. A forest can contain multiple different domains, but in most cases, it's just going to have the one. However, if you're trying to join an existing domain that might be from Windows Server 2022, 2019, or something older, that's when you choose this add a domain controller to an existing domain option. Now, if you're going to create a child domain, then you choose the add a new domain to an existing forest here. And you can see you have the option under select domain type to choose a child domain. You can also choose a tree domain, but this is something that rarely is done. So I'm not even going to go, go into that in this particular video because it's not something that most people are going to ever encounter. So I'll go ahead and choose to add a new forest because this is a brand new forest and domain. And I'll call it my test domain.int and click next. Now here's something new in Windows Server 2025. We have not seen a forced functional level above 2016. So we see 2016 and now it jumps to 2025. It skipped 2019 and 2022. So I'm very excited to see that they've gone ahead and included the higher functional levels. The higher functional levels add a lot of things, such as additional security, as well as new group policy objects that you wouldn't see if you're using the older functional level. Now, if you already have an existing domain, you don't want to upgrade it to this uh, 2025 level unless you've gone ahead and removed any older servers first that are domain controllers. You can have member servers that are older than 2025, but you can't have any domain controllers older than 2025 if you're going to be using the 2025 functional levels for forest and domain. Now, you do want to make sure that you leave the boxes checked for DNS. You can't get Active Directory to work right without it. And the global catalog keeps a copy of Active Directory and all the different object information uh, in it. So you have to have at least one global catalog server. Since this is our first one, we've got to have those in there. Now, the password that I'm putting in here is in case Active Directory breaks and we need to load the server without Active Directory. So it creates basically like a local login. So you want to make sure that you put that in and remember or mark down what that password is in case you have to go in and fix Active Directory. Now, this delegation for DNS server, that's just an old uh, warning. You don't have to worry about it. It's been on every version of Active Directory. Now, it's going to create a NetBIOS domain name, which is basically for old Windows NT4. You can pretty much ignore this, but I'd like to leave it the same name as the Active Directory domain name. Domain name. Otherwise, you may end up having problems when you go to log in if you use the domain name backslash username option. So now I'll click Next. I'm going to choose the default locations for all these things, but you might want to change them for security purposes. Next again. Now, as long as we don't see any errors here, we should be fine. I should be able to go ahead and click Install. Warnings are okay. Those are always going to happen. So you can just ignore any warnings, and it looks like it's ready to install. After installation is done, it's going to restart the server, and then the next time you log in, you're going to use the same password, the same username, but it's going to be the domain username instead. And I'll show you what that means after it restarts. It's interesting to note that it doesn't allow anything prior to the 2016 uh, functional levels, which means that we can no longer connect with 2008 domain controllers. 
And that means we are no longer using the file replication service to replicate Active Directory from one domain controller to another. You're only using Distributed File System, or DFS. And DFS is much better than FRS anyway. I've repaired many FRS databases over the years, and I'd prefer to not have to do that again. Active Directory is successfully installed, and now it's starting up the first time as a domain controller. After auto restarting, after becoming a domain controller, I have a couple of options where I could log in. I can either type in the name of my domain, which is called test domain backslash administrator. Uh, so that would be one way of logging in. The other way I could log in, which is the newer way, uh, which is called the UPN, and that stands for user principal name, would be administrator at the domain name. Now, for Azure, this is the only way you can log in. So you might as well get used to logging in this particular way. So here you can see it is administrator at mytestdomain.int. And now I'm logging in for the first time into the domain controller of that same server that I just upgraded. So how do I know it's a domain controller? Well, I need to go into Server Manager, and I can see all these different Active Directory tools, and I should be able to open up uh, Active Directory. And, and the usual, usual one we open up is Active Directory Users and Computers. That's the most popular one. It's the easiest to kind of see if the domain is up and running and any users and other types of things in there. So we can see testdomain.int is running. If it wasn't, you would get an error message at this point. Under Domain Controllers, you can see the Domain Controller just uh, promoted. And there's a whole bunch of domain users that are automatically created as well. And that is how we upgrade a Windows Server 2025 server from being a regular workgroup type computer into an Active Directory domain controller.